giving him glory, honor, and thanksgiving. And I'm excited about tonight. I want to be reformed, informed, reminded. Yeah. How many of you know that repetition is good? Yeah. You, you might have heard something all week about the seven last saying, but you haven't heard what the ministers of the night have to say. Come on, somebody. So I believe that you are in for a blessing tonight. And um, so we just kind of continue to go forth in the things of God. We give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus tonight. And to the precious Holy Spirit because he's welcome in this house. Amen. Yeah. We bless the man of God tonight. Bishop Michael Frank. His wife in her absence, Lady Frank. To the ministers of the gospel that will be proclaiming the word tonight, all the clergy, deacons, to everybody in the house. How many of you know that, that everybody is somebody in the Lord? Come on, somebody. And I'm so thankful about that, that I know that because of who I am in and whose I am, I'm somebody in the Lord. It's not about the title, it's about who you are in Christ Jesus, that you are born again man or woman of God. So I'm thankful we give God praise for this holy season. Amen. This holy week. Amen. And yes, tonight as we hear about the seven last sayings. And I'm excited about it. Because I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Aren't you glad? I'm going to say this when uh, Bishop didn't tell us who was going to sing Sunday. But when I walked in and saw um, Sister Lynette, I said, ooh. <laughs> I walked away and then I had to go back and say, are y'all singing tonight? We've got some singers in the house tonight, ain't we? The Hewitt family. I'm so excited. I enjoy listening to them. I really do. Let us stand to our feet. We're going to read our scripture tonight coming from the New Living Testament. Isaiah 53. Very familiar passage of scripture. One that I believe that should be committed to memory. Maybe not the whole thing, but a few scriptures in there we should already know. Amen. 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 Isaiah 53. And I believe that the Lord allowed, I'm going to read about 10 verses. Is that all right? Yes. Isaiah 53. Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his presence, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected a man of sorrow, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrow that weighed him down. And we thought his trouble were a punishment from God, a punishment from his own sins. But he was pierced to our rebellious crush of our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sin of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was, he was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before the shears. He did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in mid-strain. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone. But he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. 
Yet when his life is made an offering of sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life, and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hand. We thank God for the reading of his word tonight. We give God praise for this passage of scripture. I've just enjoyed reading just this week, just reading about what Jesus done for us on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Come on, somebody. We ought to get excited about what the Lord has done. It wasn't man that done it. It wasn't your mother nor your father. It wasn't you. It was Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. God gave up his son. Jesus gave up his body. So when we start talking about what Jesus has done, or be every have praise in the house. Come on, somebody. He's done things for us that we could not do for ourselves. We couldn't save ourselves. We needed someone. And I'm so glad that God sent his son. Because he could he when he died on the cross, I can I became a scapegoat. Come on, somebody. He, when he laid the stripes on the back of Jesus, I became healed. Delivered. Give God praise. Let us pray. Father God, we are so thankful tonight for another holy season, another holy week, and another, another night that we can hear about the seven last sayings that you gave on the cross of Calvary. God, we are so thankful to know that we're children of the Most High God. We are your children, God, and I'm convinced, God, I'm persuaded, God, that we don't mind giving you some praise. Because you're worthy, Father, of all our praise. God, we understand that we don't even realize just how much you have done for us. Because some were visible and some was invisible. But God, what we do do, we're going to give you praise. What we do do, we're going to give you thank you. What we do do, we're going to worship and adore you. What we do do, we're going to dance before you. God, I'm so convinced in my spirit that it had not been for you, there would be no us. I'm so convinced in my spirit that it had not been for you, we wouldn't be living the lives that we live. Come on, somebody. I tell you, thank you. God, as we continue to worship and adore you tonight, we thank you, Father God, for blessing the men and women of God that will come and give us a word from you. And I tell you, thank you in advance. Breathe tonight, God. Breathe on them as you breathe on us also. That we may hear a word, Father God, that will glorify you and edify us, God. That will build us up, Father, knowing who we are in Christ Jesus because of what you've done on the cross of Calvary. God, we thank you. And we give you praise. And we give you praise in this house. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for showing up, Holy Spirit. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. And we will give you praise. We will give you glory. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm excited because we've got seven speakers and seven words that will be coming to us tonight. Amen. We've got seven messages coming to us tonight. So we're thankful. We're thankful. At this time, we're going to have a, a, a few words from our bishop as he come before you tonight. Hear what he has to say. And after our bishop, we're going to have a selection by the Hewitt family. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Jesus.
Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. Oh, never. Does anybody got a testimony that you will never forget what Jesus done for you? Hallelujah. How many of you are excited and thankful that Jesus thought enough of you to go to the cross and to die for your sins? Now, something about Holy Week, Easter time, amen, I know that the message is good all year long, but there is something special about Holy Week, amen? So I am excited tonight to be here for the seven last days of Jesus Christ service, amen. I want to thank everyone um, that is here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for uh, uh, being um, a guest, all the speakers. Thank you for saying yes. Um, thank you for just uh, allowing yourself to be used on behalf of God to be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm so thankful for this Hewitt family. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's going to be a record label that's going to call them after tonight. Amen. Amen. Because they have that type of anointing on their life. Amen. But I'm thankful for everybody in their respective place. We thank God for our worship leader on tonight, Evangelist Samuels. Amen. Amen. Doing a wonderful job. And something that she said that really struck me when she was reading the scripture, that verse 10, when it said that it was the Lord's plan that he'd be crushed, yeah. huh? And that he would have grief. Amen. Something we talked about Wednesday night is that the plot was God's plan. Huh? And that really stirred me because we have to understand that Christ going to the cross, that was God's plan. That wasn't Judas's plan, that wasn't Satan's plan, but that was God's plan. So we have got to celebrate the plan of God, the plan that we might have salvation, the plan that we might have life, and the plan that we would have life more abundantly. Amen? So let's celebrate God for his good plan. Um, and the scripture said it was the Lord's good plan. Amen? So again, I thank everybody for being in the house, and I'm just excited and ready for these preachers to come forth and to be used by God. Amen? Amen. Hewitt family. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Now, here's one thing that you don't know. This is a fact that you don't know. This is the first time me and my sisters have ever sung as a group. All right. And you're the first ones to hear us do that. Come on. Now, let's make a deal. If we mess up, <laughs> charge it to our heads and not our hearts. You can. Because God called and we answered. Yeah. And we come here tonight yeah. to lift the name of Jesus Christ.
you on your way. Amen, amen, amen. I love it, I love it, I love it. I love praising God. I do it by myself all the time. So when I get with people, I don't know how to act sometimes, man. You know how being the only child and you be by yourself all the time. And when you get with other kids, sometimes they have to calm you down. Because we be so happy to be with other children. And I'm happy to be with other children of God tonight as we worship our God. I'm going to introduce you to the first four speakers. First four. Get excited. Somebody get a word. I believe that has been ordained for us tonight. And it's going to be good food. And so be ready to eat what God has given us tonight. Amen. Our first speaker will be coming from Pastor Gerard Nixon. Amen. All right. yeah. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. All right. Our second speaker will be Minister Shaquan Murphy. Early yeah. I say unto thee, to thee, thou shalt thou be with me in paradise. All right. Number three, Minister Margaret Johnson. Behold thy mother. Number four, Evangelist Okio Denal. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Each speaker has seven minutes. <laughs> seven minutes? I don't want us to have to go back in training. <laughs> seven minutes, is that right? Be obedient, and amen? be obedient. Brother uh, uh, Bassett, if they go over seven minutes, start playing music. <laughs> We're going to help you out. Right. Amen. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. All right, all right. Pastor Nixon, come on. Yeah. 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 Come on, come on, come on. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. While Jesus was nailed on the cross, bleeding from head to toe, trying to breathe as he left his broken body on the spikes in his feet and in his wrists, he didn't think about himself, but he had the nerve to think about those around him. He had the nerve to think about me and you. While he was on that old rugged cross, with thorns pressed upon his head. But he took the time to say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. While the thorns are pressing down on his head. Come on, let's be real. If somebody's inflicting pain on us, we ain't thinking about nobody else but ourselves. We thinking about getting revenge on them and retaliating as soon as possible. But he had a nerve to think about us. He had a nerve to say, God, forgive them for they know not what they do. Because he's seen the bigger picture. Yes. And on the cross, he demonstrated love that surpasses yes. our own understanding. Yes. And in this moment, he fulfilled what he said in Matthew 5, 44. Love your enemies. Uh -huh. Bless those who curse you. Yes. Do good for those who hate you. Yes. And pray for those who respond to you. You just have to who persecute you. So I don't know about you, but I thank God that he didn't come down off the cross. Yes or choose to go another way, but he went the way that God intended for him to go. And it was by the way of the cross. He decided to take that being for us. He, he decided to be nailed for the cross for us. When it should have been us that should have got those whips on our back. When it should have been us that got the nails in our hand, the nails in our feet. But he said, I'll go down as a living sacrifice. As much. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm forgive me. He decided to take that beating for us. He decided to take the nails on the cross for us. And it's about all that he to pray. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. But the greatest thing that he could ever do was step off his heavenly throne and say, prepare me a body. And I'll go down as a living sacrifice. Thank God that he allowed his own son to die while we were yet sinned. Wow. 
washed in the blood. It gave us a chance to be have a relationship with God. It gave us a chance to be snatched from the enemy's grasp and to be in the hand of God. But what it also did, it gave us some power. Tell somebody gave us some power. It gave me power to, it also gave me authority to tell the devil, get out of my house. When he was 
a baby, she had to wipe the tears from his eyes. When he fell down and got hurt, she had to kiss the move on his knee. She's the one that had to feed him and raise him up. But yet, she had to watch him be crucified. I don't know about you, but I'm a mama. And when somebody hurt my baby, Mama Mary's coming out. I'm not going to just stand there and allow you to mistreat my boy. But Mary, God bless her. She had no other choice but to stand there. One thing I, I gathered from this scripture is that Mary was there and she watched all this. And I can imagine that tears were streaming down her eyes and she was crying and grieving because she saw the mistreatment of her son. But because of who he was, because of the call that was on his life, he had no other choice but to say, woman, behold your son. She gave him up. I mean, he gave her yeah. to someone else. Yeah. He turned her over to John yeah. and said, okay, John, you, I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> John, you take her, take, take my mom. Yeah. I trust you yeah. to take good care of her. Yeah. Because the Bible says that from that day on, she lived with John. Yeah. She stayed in his house. Yes. He took care of her. Yes. But what I'm going to get to is the fact that Jesus on the cross nails in his hands crown of thorns. Uh -huh. yes. His back was already beat. Nice. They said they beat him with something called a cat of nine tails. Yep. And this is a strip, a piece of leather that has metal prongs on it. Uh -huh. And each time they hit him, yeah. it ripped his skin. Yeah. Yeah. It tore him. Yeah. Thank you. After all that suffering, yes. Thank you. Jesus was still yes. able to say, you know what? I see the hurt in my mother's eyes. Yeah. I see the hurt that she's feeling. Uh -huh. So I'm going to forget about me. And I'm going to think about her. How many times can we say that we forgot about our pain and thought about somebody else? I want you to understand that when you're in pain, sometimes God needs you to step away from that pain. Because God told me to tell you on tonight to push away from your pain. Because he has need for you.
He needs you to walk away from that pain. Uh -huh. The lion. Because Jesus did. Yes. Can we be like Jesus? Hallelujah. Can we walk away from our pain? Our struggles? Our disappointments? He said, yeah, we can. Amen. Because if he did it, we can do it. Amen. So I encourage you all tonight. Step away from your pain. Amen. Walk away from your pain. Amen. Press past your pain. Because he has you. Might 
be up here or youth might be flying across in a nice jet or being youth. You know what? But youth could be you got to be in the middle of China with no air condition, right. digging a ditch in order for somebody to be saved. Being you, everybody just can't walk up in the cancer ward. Somebody got to be able to go in the cancer ward so God's miracle can be performed. Somebody got to go in the stroke unit so they can tell somebody the goodness of Jesus. I remember when my mama was in the stroke unit. She was prophesying to the doctor. She was praying for because it wasn't about her having a stroke, but she was on assignment from God. So even when you feel broken, abused, sick, wore down, can't get up, can you fulfill your assignment? And even when you ask God, God, why are you forsaking me? And he doesn't answer. We still got to be obedient. <laughs> Fulfill your assignment. Now that's a word. Because a lot of times we get an assignment from God, we try to look right to see who else we can opinionate that on. Come on, somebody. But if God spoke to you, it is for you to do. I thank you for that. God bless you. We're going to go on to uh, Minister Rodalyn McRae. <laughs> Amen. Let's hear what God is saying to her. And after uh, Minister McCray, we're going to have uh, Minister Shaquan Murphy to come back Amen. and minister Amen. a word to us. Amen. Amen. Come on, bless the Lord. Right. Come on, bless the Lord. I'm coming behind some heavy hitters, but it's okay. I'm new to this, but I'm true to it. Let's go. So. <laughs> My word is, uh, I thirst. So John 19, I'm going to hop right into it. John 19, 28 says, Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill the scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there. So they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. So this is the fifth word of the seven life sayings of Christ. And it's the most human uttered word by Jesus. He has been whipped, spit on, mocked, crowned with thorns, made to bear his cross, fallen three times, and on the way to the cross, and they pierced him in his hands, his side, his feet, and then he was nailed to the cross. I am sure that any man would be thirsty after going through all of this. He took on the characteristics of being human so that he could feel everything. Matthew 27 and 34 recorded that Jesus declined the first drink, which is wine mixed with myrrh. I call it a mixed drink. <laughs> Y'all know about that. Uh, it was the custom for the Romans to offer a man being crucified drug wine so that he could endure the cross easier. But how many of you know that you can't always dull your problems with a mixed drink? You can't always dull your problems with drugs and even fornication. That is not going to quit the thirst of the pain that you're feeling. Another man can't do it. Another woman can't do it. Another job can't do it. You have to go through that thing just like Jesus did with a clear head and a sober mind. So that you can fulfill the purpose of the cross that he had for you to bear also. Not just bear it, but you have to learn something when you go through it. What is the use of going through a test if you don't learn anything from it? Jesus had to walk through the pain because like our generation said, he understood the assignment. Jesus didn't say he was thirsty until he knew that his mission was completed and that the scripture had been fulfilled. Jesus, he fell, the fall of man beginning with Adam and Eve with food, but it ended with a drink. And what's significant about this his approach is because the same branch they lifted to Jesus' mouth was the same <laughs> it was the same plant they lived on the blood lamp on the doorpost. Yeah. So the lamb saved the Israelites, but the lamb of God's blood saved us all. So they gave him a drink because he was thirsty. You see, we have a thing called, our generation called, a phrase called being thirsty. So being a thirst trap. That simply means that someone would debase him or herself to gain the attention or affection of something or someone. Meaning that they will reduce their value or dignity just to quench the thirst of 
that feeling that they're going through. Look at your neighbor and tell them, don't be thirsty. Don't be thirsty. Thank you. You have to understand that our spirit, spiritual thirst might speak to our personal worries or the places in the world where people just need renewal. They just need hope, relief from some suffering. Some of us have to just need a refreshment, and we have been deprived of love, hope, and so many other things. But we need to drink from the well of prayer to be refreshed from the living water, which is God. Don't reach for material things and people to quench your thirst. Don't be thirsty for anyone but God. He died on the cross so that you wouldn't be thirsty. He paid it all so you don't have to be thirsty. In John 4 and 14, he said that those who drink from the water that I give will never from the CV translation, one of the criminals hanging there also insulted Jesus by saying, are you the Messiah? Save yourself and save us. But the other criminal told the first one off, don't you fear God? Aren't you getting the same punishment as this man? We got what was coming to us, but he didn't do anything wrong. Then he said to Jesus, remember me when, this is the part I love, when you come into power. All right. Jesus replied, I promise that today you will be with me in paradise. We can live for a topic for a moment. It would be by invite only. All right. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, have you ever been to a party or an event that was not publicized? But you happened to hear the testimonies of people who was in attendance to find out later that it was only by invite only. Some people will wonder, why wasn't I invited? Most of the time, it is not done intentionally, but yet in many cases, people are part of a person's inner circle. Mm -hmm. Have you, uh, it's, or maybe you have not presented yourself uh, to be invitable. Uh, now, on the flip side, it is not bad a bad thing that people don't consider you part of their circle. Mm -hmm. Because the truth of the matter is, as saints of God, we have been set apart anyhow. Right. And sometimes if we 
Even though he has a name, but he's more commonly known as the penitent thief. Right. Penitent is defined as the feeling of sorrow, regret having uh, done wrong, and repented. All right, sir. Here in the text, the thief acknowledged the fact that he has not lived a perfect life. Mm -hmm. He acknowledged the fact that he is guilty of the sins he has committed. Mm -hmm. But he does something that amazes me. He comes to the defense of Jesus, who he does not know. Yes. But yet they have received the same punishment. Yes. I need to just tell your neighbor, just for a moment, hold on, because there's about to be deliverance on death row. Hey. Uh, because, Bishop, I begin to ponder yes. in my mind, what in the world made him jump to Jesus' defense? Uh -huh. Our Paul helped me out according to Romans 6 and 16. He said, don't you know that you are slaves to anyone you obey? Uh -huh. You can be slaves to sin and die, yes. or you can be obedient to God yes. and be accepted unto him. Yes. I believe realize uh, that I got one chance left. God, help me only go, what? I feel like preaching here. Uh -huh. I got one chance left. I don't know who you are, but I see how hard they trying to shut you up and kill you. I don't know who you are, but I saw the fact that you still had a nerve that say, Father, forgive us. Well, I got to go now, y'all. Come on, she's quiet. Yeah. And I got to get out of here. But I just want to tell you right quickly that this next level of your life, you can't take everybody with you. Uh, because uh, they don't realize or recognize the anointing on your life. Yes. And sometimes uh, uh, they don't, and even though they do see the anointing on your life, uh, it disturbs the demons in their life. Uh, I gotta go. Uh, uh, but I'm reminded what Paul said in Romans. Uh, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, and against rulers of darkness, of this world, against spiritual wickedness, in high places. But can I tell you, come on and help me right 
glory to God. Are you enjoying the word tonight? Walk in forgiveness. Come on, somebody. <laughs> By invitation only. Come on. Don't get mad when you're not invited. God don't want you there anyway. If he wanted you there, he would have got you invited. He would have gave you an invitation. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. And if, it, if you didn't get an invitation and it caused you some pain, just step away from it. Just step away from it. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the fact that uh, you had to step away from it, you may feel a little beaten up. But Jesus was beaten up, but still fulfilled his assignment. So you got to go on anyway. It don't matter about what had happened. Go on anyway. And when you get where you go and turn off the faucet. Come on, somebody. Woo. Hallelujah. I don't know about y'all. I'm having myself a good time. Come on. And the reason I'm having a good time is because God is being glorified. Huh? I, I know people say we had a good time, but my question is if you glorify God, the fact that you had a good time is all right. But make sure you glorify God. Hallelujah. I'm going to shut up because the Hewitt family are coming back. In the name of Jesus. And the first selection that they're going to do, we're going to ask the ushers and the deacons to come forth, and we're going to take an offering up. All this word that we're receiving tonight, please plant a seed. Amen. Amen. We're asking the Hewitt family to come back and do two selections. One is they're taking up the offering, and one right before the next speakers come in that order. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell y'all, I feel like I'm right drunk right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
everyone will stand as we pray of our offering. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, oh God. God, we give you honor. We give you glory on tonight, oh God. We thank you for this opportunity of giving, oh God. Lord, we stand on your word and your principles on giving, knowing, oh God, if we give with a cheerful heart, oh God, God, that you will bless us beyond measure, oh God. And Lord, we know, oh God, that this is good ground, oh God. This is fertile ground, oh God. So we give our seeds willingly, oh God. And we thank you for this offering, oh God. Bless it, increase it, oh God, a hundred, a thousand fold, oh God, and we count all these things done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before the Hewitt family sing, we're going to introduce our next two ministers of the gospel as they will come forth with the word. I'm not going to ask you, are you getting anything? Because I know you are. Amen. I know you're getting something. I can see it on your face. To God be the glory. Right. So we're going to have Minister Cecilia Buckley. She's coming with It Is Finished. Enough. And after Cecilia Buckley, the prophet is coming. <laughs> He's bringing up the last word. Yes. Prophet Don Terry is rich. Right. Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Yes. Let us hear from the Hewitt family now.
from the lenses of the 21st century, telling the story without taking it out of content. Uh -huh. My sanctified imagination heard. Come on. Breaking news. Breaking news. Come on. Jesus, the King of the Jews, has just spoken again. Right. He said, It is finished. Yeah. News reporters standing by, ready to capture every angle of the scene. All right. Bystanders texting and tweeting, Come on. posting on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Videos of this moment going viral too fast to be stopped by the iconic classic movement that destroyed all the original images of Jesus. As the camera began to zoom in on the scene of the crime, one view showed the presence of the centurion soldiers, the chief priests, priests, members of the Sanhedrin council and the elders laughing and mocking Jesus. The two thieves, one on the right and one on the left, Another camera caught a glimpse of his mother, Mary, his aunt Mary, and Mary the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene, who the one Jesus clean, cleansed of seven demons, and John the disciple he loved. All four Marys and John were spotted near the foot of this uplifted cross. One reporter asked the question, where are the men who followed Jesus? I dropped that right there as a little shade. <laughs> But the woman, because the woman, they stayed right there. Yeah. Some was crying, some moaning, and just some watching from afar. The crowd consisted of them from all over, in all kinds of circumstances, gazing at this uplifted cross. Maybe somebody remember Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Suddenly, a warning came across the screen. It said, warning, warning, this is not for the faint of heart. The camera zoomed in on the naked body of Jesus yeah. because the Jewish people believed that nakedness was the ultimate shame and dishonor. Yeah. But they didn't realize that this event presented a photograph or a picture of a preordained and a predestinated practice. Because as the reporters moved through the crowd, one stop at the place where the doctors at Calvary were standing, they asked, what do you think is going on in this man's body? But even as the medical report, report is being read right now, I need you to put your hands up in solidarity for what Jesus went through for you and me. Yeah. One doctor began to explain how the blows on his head could have produced a serious concussion. Uh -huh. They could have hands up. Uh -huh. They could have, he could have had a cerebral shock or cerebral contusion. Uh -huh. The large bones on his right cheeks indicated that the septum of his nose was broken.
is why I come. I get happy, but I'm glad to know that they didn't understand, and many people won't understand that whenever they treat you some type of way, they feel like you ought to give up on them, and, and you ought to make them suffer and pay for what they've done to you. But I want to do it this same way right here. Forgive them even though they've done it. Huh? Because what, whatever, I'm not saying the bishop did anything to me, but whatever bishop do to me, it's not drawing me away from him. But it's drawing me closer to Jesus. Because the Bible let us know that we are not putting our faith in no man. And that's what happened. That's why we're so away from the church and heartbroken because we don't put our faith in the right man. So we have to go through these things so we can understand it's not always about these people around you. Yeah, we may assemble in the same building. Yeah, we might go to the same church. Yeah, we might eat together at the same table. But it's not about them. They're going to do things. They're going to do things in your life that make you start to question humans. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe that's what happened whenever Jesus said, Father, why have thou forsaken me? Because he started to question some things. Yeah. Yeah. He started to question. I know that I know that this moment was going to have to come, but it made me question that all of these people, as the woman of God said, throw shade. All of these disciples that was with me, nobody stood up for me. All of these people that said that I had your back and, and I got you, but you see me on this cross and I don't see 11 more crosses beside me. I only see two thieves. Why is it that if you got me till the end, why wouldn't you up here with me? So that had, that had to give you a really mental state to understand that everybody that's with you ain't with you. And that Minister Murphy, Rev. Murphy said that it's invite only if everybody can't go to your, to your ending point. Everybody Good when family yeah. can 
and sing the songs of Zion. That's a beautiful thing. I'm about to get out of your way because we are going to ask them to do one more selection. Now, if it's left up to me, I can stay here for a while. But we know people have to go home. And after the selection from the Hewitt family, give them a standing ovation as we give our speakers a standing ovation. Our closing remarks will come from our bishop, Bishop Michael L. Frank. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a small upon you. Give my prayer. siblings are gonna let me sing this one. All right. I love this song. I want y'all to hear me sing it too. Okay. Yeah. All right. I love you, Lord. Yeah. For your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up right. till I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And oh, Oh, yes, you have. 
God. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful that I'm able to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Hallelujah. How many of y'all have seen the goodness of God? I'm going to tell you what, the cross alone is the goodness of God. How the cross explains his love for us. And God keeps flowing his love to us over and over again. That's why I understand when he said he's come to give us life and to give us more abundantly. Hallelujah. His goodness is such an abundance. And you know, if we had testimony hour right now, we could be here till next week simply because God is just so good in so many ways. I like to call him way maker. Hallelujah. Because he can make a way out of the way. Hallelujah. But we're so grateful for the goodness of God on tonight. Amen. I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to be able to experience tonight. Tonight was epic, I would say. It was an epic night. It was an awesome night. And I'm telling you, as I listen to the preachers come forth, I just felt the Spirit of God all over them. I didn't feel no flesh. I didn't feel no competition. I just felt some preachers coming forth to give God glory. Amen. So I want to thank you, men and women of God, for coming forth. Let's give them all that can stand and give them a round of applause. Amen. For them being faithful and loving and kind enough to come forth to impart a word into our life. Amen. And while you're standing, we have got to give God a praise for the human family. Amen. Come on, we got to do better than that. Amen. Their autographs after the services come to me. I'll show you where to. <laughs> Amen. But I thank God for you, you and family. Thank y'all for saying yes. Um, I hope y'all know how phenomenal y'all are. You really are. And it's because of the Spirit of God that's in y'all. So thank you so much for coming. I hope this is a. I hope this won't be the last yes you give me because I'm ready to bring you back again. Yeah. <laughs> but we really thank God for what y'all poured into the house. Amen. Amen. We thank God for these musicians. Amen. Job. Amen. We just thank God for everybody in the respective place. Amen. Certainly we're not going to uh, hold you any longer. Amen. God has spoken. We have praised. We have worshiped. Amen. I just want to thank all visitors that are here. Thank you so much for coming and being yeah. here. Amen. Thank you for being here. You're always welcome here at Embracing Christ. Amen. We'll be here back on Sunday at 10 o'clock. Amen. Somebody say Sunday is coming. Man, I'm excited about Sunday. Amen. I know Steph. I know the choir. I know y'all about to blow Sunday. Amen. Amen. I praise God for y'all. I know that God's going to use y'all tremendously. Amen. We're excited to uh, to be able to remember and celebrate God. Amen. Amen. But sir, I just want to recognize and thank God for you. You're probably the first person here. Amen. Amen. I don't know who you are, but I'm glad you're here. You came in. Amen. You came to have your seat. Amen. But we thank God for you being here being here uh, tonight. Amen. 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 All ministers in the house, please stand. There might be some ministers in the house that did not speak tonight. I know y'all got a word in you. Amen. I want all the preachers to stand in the house. Amen. Amen. I see you. You didn't have to go to the house. We can do a round two. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But God is good. Certainly, again, I can't tell you thank you enough for coming. Amen. I pray that everybody receives something from the Lord that they can use to continue to go down this road. Amen. 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 Well, we're not going to tarry long. We're just going to stand to our feet. I'm going to ask of all those, all those preachers that participated, if you would please um, just stay over here for a minute. I want to get your picture. Um, and also, if y'all if don't mind, just stand for a few for a moment. I want to get your picture as well. Amen. Amen. I want to remember this night because it was awesome. Everybody just stand to your feet. Amen. I'm going to encourage you, I'm encourage you all if you can. Um, let a preacher know how well they've done. Let the Hewitts know how well they've done. Let's encourage each other. Let's not just walk out of here and say, I got to go get me a sandwich from McDonald's. Let's try to encourage each other. I tell you, encouragement, it helps. It helps us to continue on and to keep going. Amen. Amen. Don't be thirsty. Amen. Amen. I'll be quoting, quoting all y'all Sunday. Amen. Amen. But to God be the glory. Let us pray. God, we thank you, Lord, 
for this wonderful opportunity of celebration, of worship, of praise. Well, certainly we thank you, Lord, because it's because of the Son, your Son, that you sent to the cross. Lord, that we're able to have this celebration. So, God, Lord, we just praise you, Lord, for caring enough about us that you would send your only begotten Son. Lord, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. God, Lord, as we uh, come tonight, God, we've gathered and we've uh, received. So, Lord, help us to, as we leave this place, Lord, that we'll be able to share this good news of Jesus Christ to someone near and far, God. Lord, we ask, Lord, again, as we leave this place, Lord, that you would just touch us, God. Lord, that you anoint us from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. God, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you anoint our cars, our engines, our tires. Lord, we ask that you will keep the critters in the woods, Lord. Let us get to our destinations safely, Lord. God, Lord, I ask too, Lord, that we will find when we get home that we'll find things better than the way that we left them. God, Lord, we give you praise in this place. Lord, we give you honor. We give you glory. Ah, uh, because you're worthy of it all. Lord, it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. 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 Can we celebrate God by putting our hands together?